Spy Catcher. A series of true stories of the unceasing search for enemy spies in wartime, based on the memoirs of Lieutenant Colonel Arreste Pinto of the Allied Counterintelligence Service. In 1940, Norway, Denmark, Holland, Belgium and France had been occupied by the Germans and Britain awaited invasion. The spies who came to Britain were resolute and often courageous men. And the German method was to infiltrate their spies among genuine patriots who during the war made spectacular escapes from the occupied country. The quickest but most dangerous escape route was by boat, usually an open boat, across the North Sea. Throughout the war, I was responsible for the interrogation of escapers and suspected spies. This is the story of one escape boat that left the Dutch coast in the spring of 1942. It was a small motorboat. It was unseaworthy, and it had a faulty engine. In it were three men, an elderly, timid man named Johannes Dronkers, a young man named Jan Lerton, and a student of Dutch Malayan parentage named Hans Delden. I told their story, one must die. Where are we now, Jan? I don't know. We've lost a lot of time. I'd like another hour of darkness. It's getting night already. The patrols will be looking out for us. We left at nine o'clock last night. Now ten past six. What speed did we make, Jan? Including the breakdown, about five knots. Nine hours at five knots? That leaves only ten, fifteen miles to go. If we came as the crow flies. How is the old man? Got over his seasickness? I think so. Ah, here he is. Good morning, Mr. Drunkard. Good morning, Hans. Morning, Jan. Coffee, Mr. Drunkard? Thank you. But we mind, it's hot, Mr. Drunkard. Thank you, Hans. What are you going to do when we get to England, Jan? What we agree to do. Join the Free Dutch Army. And uh, you, sir, what will you do? What can I do? You're lucky, both of you. You'll be welcome. They need soldiers. I'll be just another old man. Another mouth to feed. And they say they're short of food in England, too. Hans! Huh? There's a plane! Oh, what? Where? What? Can you see it? Oh, yes! Whose is it? Uh, I don't know. Not light enough. Binoculars, please. It's turning. I, I think it's... Just a moment, Jan. I think it's English. Quick, Mr. Drunkard, our uh, flag. Show our flag. Hey, hey. Oh, God, God, please make it English. Please, please make it English. Quick, give me an end of it. Show our flag. Wave to him. Wave to him. Hey. Hey. Did you see, Jan? It's English. We are Dutchmen. 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 Free Dutchmen. Free, Free Dutchmen. Dutchmen. Yes, they were Dutchmen, but they were not yet free. They had braved the dangers of the North Sea in wartime, but each boatload of men, however brave, was a mixed blessing. Most of them were patriots, but some we knew were spies. And who were they? For the safety of Great Britain, each escaper had to be screened and interrogated. Come in. Oh, thank you, Waterloo. Sir? Please sit down. Thank you, sir. Um, <clears throat> your name, please? Luffin, sir. Jan Luffin. Nationality? Dutch, sir. Born? Rotterdam, sir. Age? 26. When did you arrive in England? Two days ago, sir. And why have you come here? To escape from the Germans, sir, and to join the Free Dutch Army. I'm a trained soldier, sir. I did my training before the occupation. Tell me your story. You mean how we escaped, sir? Yes. Well, we came in a small boat from Rotterdam uh, two nights ago. Did you have any trouble making your escape? No, sir. Was it your boat? Uh, no, sir. It belongs to Mr. Drunkard. He bought it. Who organized the escape? I suppose Mr. Drunkard, sir. He found this boat and let us join him. Yes, um, tell me about uh, joining him. Yes, sir. Well, I've been wanting for some time to come to England to be away from the Germans. To join the Free Dutch Army in England. And I was told that Mr. Drunkard was also trying to get to England. Who told you? Uh, a friend, sir. You know how it is. Mr. Drunkard was in trouble with the Gestapo. Oh? What kind of trouble? A 
before dealing in the black market, sir. I was told that he'd gone to Rotterdam to try to get to England. I was born in Rotterdam, sir, so I went there to find him. Well, if he was hiding from the Gestapo, did you expect to find him? Well, this friend, sir, gave me an address where I could find him. A cafe. Which cafe? The Cafe Atlanta, sir. Hmm. Now, you went to this cafe and met him? Yes, sir. Was he pleased to see you? Oh, yes, sir. He's an old friend. I've known him since I was a boy. Did he ask you to go with him? No, sir. I asked if I could join him, and he was pleased about it. He said he'd been offered a boat. It was an old one, and he needed someone with him in case of trouble. What kind of trouble? Well, a, a storm, sir, or the engine failing. Do you know about engines? <laughs> not very much, sir. I can tinker with them. But it was a very simple engine and not a very good one. But it got you here. Yes, sir. And um, there were three of you on this escape. Yes, sir. Myself, Mr. Drunkard, and my friend Hans Delton. Hmm. Now, tell me about Delton. We were students together in Rotterdam. Malayan, that's sir. His parents are in Malaya. Where did you meet him? In Rotterdam, sir. By arrangement? No, sir, but just by chance. Did you tell him why you'd come to Rotterdam? No, sir. Well, how did he come to join you? I told him about it later, sir, when we'd become friends again. He said he wanted to join the Dutch army, sir. And when you asked Mr. Dronkers if a third man could join this escape, um, what did he say? He said no. He didn't want a third person. He said the boat was too small. Well, what made him change his mind? I did, sir. I said that if I was joining the Dutch army, so was Hans. Oh, what did he say to that? Well, he said that if Hans promised to join the free Dutch army, he would take us both. So it was on your insistence that Hans Delden came with you? Yes, sir. It was. Uh, where did you meet this friend, Jan Lerton? In the street, sir. Where? Rotterdam, sir. Near my home. How long was it since you'd last seen him? Since we were at school, sir. About ten years. And was he pleased to see you? No, sir. Not at first. He was a bit jumpy and said he didn't want to be seen in the street. He asked if we could speak in my rooms. So you took him to your rooms and he told you this story of escaping to England? No, sir. Uh, we just talked about old school friends and what had happened to them. He said he was on holiday from The Hague. It was later, many days later. How many? Four days, I think, sir. It was the next Thursday. Why did he tell you then? We were talking about the English radio, about listening to the BBC news, and he told me in confidence that he was hoping to escape to England to fight with the Free Dutch Army. Did he tell you how? No, sir. And he asked you to join him? Uh, no, sir. I asked him if I could join him. What did he say? He said he would ask his friend. Later, he told me his friend had said no. He was very upset about it and took me to see his friend. Uh, who was this friend? Why, Mr. Drunker, sir. What did he say? At first, he would not have me. He said the boat was too small. So, Jan Lerven used his influence to get you into this escape party? Yes, sir. I see. Well, that will be all for the moment. Well, I must congratulate you on organizing this escape, Mr. Jonkers. Thank you, sir. Um, as you know, I've already been talking to your two young friends, and there are one or two points in their stories that I'd like to get clear. Of course, sir. So, would you tell me your story in full and from the beginning? Yes, sir. My name is Johannes Jacobus Dronkers. I lived at The Hague. I'm married, but we have no children, sir. I was a postal clerk, a small position, sir, not well paid. Well, even before the war, we were not well off, and with the occupation and the price of everything going up, it is impossible to live on my small salary. We hadn't enough food, and my wife became ill. I'm not a very strong man, sir, and not a very brave one. I heard that one could make money in the black market, where well, even a clerk of the postal service was useful to the black market, so I was able to sell food. It was German food, sir, stolen food. The things had gone well. I admit I would have stayed in Holland with my wife, but... But one day the Gestapo began to round up the black market, and then a friend came to my house to warn me that the Gestapo knew about it. What day was this? Hmm? Oh, it, it was a Sunday morning, sir, about three weeks ago. He came to my home and said I should leave immediately. I told my wife, and she said I should go. Well, I gave her all the money I had saved, except about 50 pounds to get away with, and I went to Rotterdam. Why to Rotterdam? Well, my friend advised me that Rotterdam was best, and I'm not known there. 
He told me to go to a cafe, the Cafe Atlanta, and to try to make a friend there. He said I could meet people there from the harbor who might help me, but I must be careful to get to know them well first. Hmm. And you were able to meet a harbor official? Oh, I'd gone there for coffee for three days before we even spoke, sir. Then for two days, when we met, we spoke about just anything, and I, I learned that he worked at the harbor. Later, when I felt I could trust him, I told him that I needed a boat, and he said he might be able to help me. You told him that you were in trouble with the Gestapo? Oh, no, sir. No. At first, I told him I was in trouble with the German. Just the German. And he said he would be glad to help me if he could. And when he said that he might be able to help you, what happened then? He said he had a small motorboat in the harbor. Not a very good one, but it might make the journey to England if I was really desperate. I said I was. And I said I would buy it from him, no matter how bad it was, if he thought it would get me to England. He said it wasn't any use to him because there was so little petrol. Can you navigate a boat? No, sir. But he said he had authority to take this boat out of the harbor. He would do this while I was hidden in the cabin. We'd go down the coast, and then he'd go ashore, and I was to steer west, just to keep going west. And it was then up to you? Yes, sir. Were you afraid? There was no other way. But then things began to go right for me. When I went to the cafe that evening, Jan was there, and he brought me news that my wife was well, and the Germans had not arrested her. And he wanted to come with me, sir, and he knew about boats. Well, he knew about engines. Weren't you surprised that he was able to find you so easily? No, sir. You see, this friend who told me about the cabin... But didn't you feel that if Jan Lurton could find you so easily, the Gestapo could also find you? Yes, sir. Uh, that's why I was so anxious to get away quickly. There's an air raid warning, sir. A red warning. Oh, thank you. Uh, I think we'll have to break now, Mr. Jonkers. Um, oh, this is yes. an air raid warning, and I'm afraid our headquarters are in what we call Bomb Alley, so you must go to the shelter. Yes, sir. Uh, the orderly will take you. We'll continue our talk later. Thank you, sir. This way, please. Oh, sorry, sir. I thought you'd gone to the shelter. Huh? Oh, no, no. no I've got some work to do. <laughs> I think I'll sit this one out. Some uh, papers for your signature, sir. Clearance orders. Yeah, thank you, Captain. How was your lot this morning? Oh, a pretty straightforward bunch. The crew of a fishing boat out of Brittany. They doused the lights and made off in the night. They all wanted to come except two, and uh, they had to come. Well, at least we get a fishing boat out of there. Yeah. And some recruits for the French Navy. What do we get out of yours? Hmm? An old motorboat, two patriots, and a spy. Certain, sir? Yes. Yeah. Evidence? Not yet. Do you know which one? Yes. Come in. Well, thank you, all the name. Uh, come in, Mr. Drunkers. Do sit down. Thank you, sir. Now, where were we, Mr. Drunkers? Um, oh, yes. Your young friend, Jan Lurton, had arrived at the Cafe Atlanta and had found you there. And I asked you if you knew that the Gestapo might find you just as quickly. Uh, yes. I'd thought of that, but all the time I'd been afraid that the Gestapo would come before the boat was ready. But I had to wait until there was enough petrol. And when there was enough petrol, what happened? Well, by this time, sir, there was Jan and also Hans. My friend was not pleased about this, but he agreed. He took us one at a time to his office at the harbor, and then one at a time to his boat and hid us in the cabin. All right. Well, now you're on board. Yes, sir. Well, my friend was right. It was a very small cabin, and we were there for hours. In the evening, my friend came, and he knocked on the cabin as a signal. And then we heard the engine start, and we began to move. After a time, my friend opened the cabin and let us out. He then stared into the shore, sir, and it was getting quite dark. He pointed to the west and said we should steer that way. And I paid him, and he wished us luck, and then he jumped out and waded ashore. How much did you pay him? Hmm? Oh, 450 guilders, sir, 40 pounds. Why 40 pounds? <laughs> That's all I had, sir. This was the bargain that you'd made in the cafe, um, 40 pounds? 40 pounds. Or whatever I had left when he helped us to escape. Mr. Jonkers, can you tell me why your friend should wish to commit suicide for 40 pounds? Sir? Well, why should he? 
I don't understand her. You may not know it, but we know that every boat in Dutch waters and in Belgian and French waters is registered by the Germans. This man is a harbour official. He's known to own this boat. He's seen to take it out of the harbour. Next morning, the boat is missing. What will happen to him? I, I, I don't know, sir. I hadn't thought of that. No, but presumably he had. If he's a harbour official, he works for the Germans. A boat registered in his name is now missing. He's in trouble, isn't he? Yes, sir. For 40 pounds. But he, he said he wanted to do this for me, sir. He wanted to help me. There are many good patriots who have to work for the Germans. Very well. Another point. You told me that you went to Rotterdam and went to the Café Atlanta so that you might meet someone from the harbour who could help you to escape. Yes, sir. Well, don't you think you would have been safer, that you might even have had more chance if you'd gone to a dockside cafe to meet someone from the harbour? There are so many cafes I could have gone to, sir. I was told to go to this. No, you're misunderstanding my question. I know the Café Atlanta. It's very far from being a dockside cafe. It's a luxury cafe, isn't it? Yes, sir. And it's a favourite cafe of the Germans. No, sir, they, they go there, but they go everywhere. In this cafe, this luxury cafe, this resort of Germans and German sympathizers, you meet a man who offers to sell you a boat. No, it, it wasn't like that, sir. I went there several times. I got to know this man. He was a Dutchman. And when he offers to sell you a boat, which you can't sail, there arrives at this same cafe a young man who can sail you, you mean Jan, sir? Oh, no, 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 it wasn't like that. I've known Jan for years, sir. I've known him ever since he was a boy. He's an honest, good Dutch boy, sir. A good Dutch patriot. You can check it, sir. All that I've told you is true. Yes, I believe that. I believe that all you've told me is true. But I've not been told everything. Now, Donkers, I'm going to ask you four questions. And you will tell me the truth. Yes, sir. First, why, when the Gestapo were after you, did this friend at the Hague send you to the notorious Cathy Atlanta? Why did this same friend send Jan Lerben to join you just at the right moment? Are you satisfied that your meeting with the harbour official at the Cathy Atlanta was as accidental as you say it was? And was the risk he took for you a reasonable one? Sir, there is no longer reason under the Germans. Go on. Sir, you think our escape was too easy? Yes, I think it was. Well, perhaps it was easier than other escapes you've heard of. Perhaps I was lucky to meet this man. Perhaps I was lucky that Jan and his friend were able to help me. Perhaps I don't deserve this luck. But, sir, if I had not been lucky, I wouldn't be here. And that's all you have to say? Yes. Well, it's not all I have to say. I don't believe your story. I'll swear on I it. won't accept that. I intend to keep you here until I know the truth. Sir, in the name of the God I worship, and in the name of my dead father whom I love, I swear to you that I am faithful to my country and to the House of Orange. Every word I have told you is true. Go on. With respect to you, sir, I've told you my story truthfully, that I came here to seek safety and freedom. And what have I found? Well, what have you found? I, I'm writing to our Queen about you, and to the King of England, and to Mr. Churchill. You are free to write to whom you wish, but you are not free to leave this building until I say so. I've done nothing wrong. If that is so, you've nothing to fear. Sit down, Lucan. This friend at the Hague, this friend who sent you to Rotterdam, how did you meet him? He was a friend of Mr. Donkers. How did you meet him? Well, as I told you... I don't want to know what you told me. How did you meet him? Did you know him before? No, sir, but when Mr. Donkers did not turn up at the office, I thought he must be ill, so I went to his house. Who was there? His wife, sir, and his friend. Well? His wife was very upset and said Mr. Donkers had gone away. His friend told me that Mr. Donkers was wanted by the Gestapo for dealing in the black market. I was very worried about it, and he told me Mr. Donkers was trying to get to England. And I said I wanted to go to England. He talked about it, and he said that he might have some news of Mr. Donkers in a few days. But he said not to go near the house as they expected the Gestapo to call. They expected the Gestapo to call? When did you next see this friend? Two days later, sir. He met me near my office, and he asked me if I still wanted to go to England, and I said yes. He asked me if I would take a message to Mr. Dronkers that his wife was well and that the Gestapo had not arrested her. Then he gave me the address where I could meet him. Did you take a letter to him? No, sir. 
Just this news about his wife. And when you went there, you were quite determined to join him? Yes, sir. If he was going. I didn't think he could make the journey by himself. Why should he make it at all? Well, sir, the penalty for dealing in black market is death. There are other things than black marketing for which the penalty is death. Yes, sir. I was still certain that I had a spy in my net. Two patriots and one spy. But without evidence, I had no case. Spies had no value to their masters unless they could get their information back. On the following evening, I continued my examination of their belongings. I'd eliminated every item excepting two books. A book on advanced mathematics belonging to Delden, suspicious, but he said he was a student engineer, and a Dutch English dictionary belonging to Dronkert. Also suspicious, but understandable. I studied them against my table lamp, page by page. I was at page 432 when I first saw it. A tiny pinprick under the capital letter F. And on the next page, another pinprick under a small R. Under an O. Under an E. Under a K. Under an E. And under an N. Perkin. Perkin. This was it. The markings continued on successive pages. It would be the address of a contact. Well, luckily, it was straightforward. And now, it was only a matter of patience. I have the three men here, sir. They'll bring them in. Sir. This way. You come forward, please. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Hans Delden. Sir? You still wish to join the Free Dutch Army? Yes, sir. Jan Lutton? Yes, sir. Very good. A car is waiting downstairs to take you to your barracks. You can collect your belongings on the way out. I'm sorry to have detained you so long. Congratulations and good luck. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. This way, please. Yes. Um, not you, Dronker. I found this amongst your belongings. Can you explain it? What, oh, sir? That bit of paper. Not the paper, the addresses. You wish to read them? Then I'll read them. Fröken Annette Scala, Grave Manigarten, 13-5, Stockholm. And Fernando Lorore, Roa Sousa Martin, Lisbon. Two addresses in neutral capitals. You came here to spy. This is where you had to send your information. Oh, in my belongings. In your dictionary. Who marked this for you? Was it Herr Strausch? No, sir. It must be some mistake. It's no mistake, Bronkers. We've checked the addresses. They're spy boxes, and you came here as a spy. Well, what's your story now? Please, sir, you're making a mistake. Am I? Sit down. Sit down and listen to my story. Yes, sir. You were in the black market. That part of it is true. Yes, sir. You were warned by your friends... But you didn't get away. You were caught by the Gestapo. The penalty was death. They offered you your life if you would work for them. They gave you a little training, and they marked this dictionary for you with two addresses. They said they'd get you safely to England to spy for them. What did they want to know? No, sir. Anyway, they sent you to the Cafe Atlanta to contact one of their agents. He was to provide you with a boat and petrol. But he reported that you were incapable of taking it to England alone. No, sir, please. I assure this you... This man whom Jan Lerven met at your house wasn't a friend. He was from the Gestapo, keeping an eye on your wife. Jan Lerven was a gift to them. A young patriot who could sail a boat and who thought you were honest and would vouch for you. So he sent him to join you. Jan had a friend in Rotterdam. This was even better luck. Two young patriots who would bring you safely to England and vouch for you. The lovable old man who had befriended them. Oh, the Gestapo did well by you. What else did they offer you beside your life? A pension for your wife? Yes, sir. Will they pay it? Will they pay it now? No, yes, sir. <laughs> well, when you're ready, I'll take your statement. And this time, the true story. <laughs> Johannes Jacobus Dronkers 
was tried at the Central Criminal Court for Mr. Justice Rotherglade in November 1942. He was condemned to death. He appealed, and his appeal was rejected. On December the 31st, 1942, he was hanged at Wandsworth Prison. You've been listening to Spy Catcher, with Bernard Archard as Colonel Oreste Pinto. The script was written by Robert Barr, and the program produced for the BBC by Charles Maxwell.